After nearly two years of tariffs, counter-tariffs, meetings, ill-tempered tweets, and backroom maneuverings, we will be able to finally be on the point of the first trade deal between the US and China. It wasn't worth it. Trump signed off on a phase one trade deal with China, deterring the December 15 introduction of a new wave of US tariffs on about US$160 billion of consumer goods from China, as reported by the experts. The deal contained a promise by the Chinese to buy more U.S. agricultural goods. Trump tweeted, saying, getting very close to a big deal with China. They want it, and so do we. We remember Trump tweeting just a few months ago saying, trade wars are good and easy to win. Trump is now officially humiliated in front of the entire world. China has taken this loser to the cleaners. What a joke. Trump is going to take China's word for these beautiful promises to buy more American agricultural products. This is almost as good as Trump's 2016 promises about a big, beautiful wall and who's going to pay for it, and the crowd screaming, Mexico. Can we hire China to build the wall for us? When you threaten and then fail to act, you lose all credibility, especially with a country like China that has about 3,000 years of history and never forgets. Trump has no leverage whatsoever to force a deal through with President Xi. But he is able to goose up the markets with this BS rhetoric, and that might be enough to buy him another term if the owners of the Fed decided not to crash the economy before the election. China laid out their terms weeks ago in public even though Trump completely ignored what they said and continued to tell the US public a different story. China clearly stated there would be no deal unless previous tariffs were removed completely. That U.S. effort to repeatedly tell the media and U.S. public lies about China's position in order to try and pretend that China was saying things they weren't can definitely be defined as not negotiating in good faith. Trump is only offering to take half the tariffs off. China will likely refer back to day one, and once again repeat that either all tariffs come off or there will be no deal. This is done or die for Trump. Does he work for the stock market or the people who elected him? and, delaying, new tariffs will count as a cave to China. He's got a few days to decide whether he wants to be re-elected. Welcome to the Atlantis report. Trump should have simply done away with all tariffs at the get-go, course we would still have had the end of the credit cycle and fiat money to contend with. How many billions in the hole, plundered and redistributed socialist bailouts have bankers puppet Trump cost all working and saving bona fide white, black, brown, yellow and red Americans, stolen from the unalienable sovereign monetary property of the people, in his China negotiations failure? Exactly. Art of the steel. China's exports rose over 2% over the past 18 months. The US has fallen in the toilet, not just with China, but many other countries and some of that are gone for good. Manufacturing did not come back to the US. It just moved to other poorer countries. The wealth we think we are currently enjoying was entirely funded by Trump's piling on of debt, which we now owe to others, with interest that compounds. If we really break things down and look, we discover that US companies today are earning no more profits than they did several years ago. What we perceive as wealth is the stock market sitting at its heights, but when our debt high is over, and it crashes, we will discover the US's economy is failing just as much, or more, than China's. Chinese don't have to come to the table. If the Iranian and North Koreans can hold off against the American sanctions, what makes him think the Chinese can't? Trump can keep on claiming victory when in the world's eye and behind closed doors, everyone knows the US and its shills are going to go blue. What have I been telling you, folks? Didn't hear it? Okay, I'll repeat it. The US cannot, I repeat cannot, win a trade war with China under no circumstances. China is basically saying to the US, who's your daddy baby? Come on, let me hear you say it, who's your daddy? Trump is four to five presidents too late. If he had been president during this time, all the trade agreements, the outsourcing of jobs, China's admission to the WTO and more wouldn't have happened. Many don't want to tell you this, but I'm going to do it. China is the number one economy in the world. Period. The country surpassed the US some time ago. So get used to it and get ready for the US to suffer if the trade war BS keeps up and China runs out of patience. By the way, I don't think it's Trump's fault. He tried to get China to kneel, but they're not ready to learn any new tricks from the United States. And the impeachment is not helping Trump bargain from a powerful position. Could it be that the only thing that Americans manufacture are weapons? 
And judging by the F-35, we are not very good at that either. Be honest, which merchandise would you buy, a crappy useless item made in the USA, or the same crappy item made in China at half the price? I believe the consumer has spoken. But in these days of bogus high crimes and misdemeanors, we are all aware that what we think really doesn't matter to the people who rule over us, as long as they get their kick back. None of the manufacturing jobs is coming back. What has moved from China has gone to other Asian countries and India, not the US. And most of that was not moving out of China but was building their newest expansion in other Asian countries. There will never be a US textile industry again not unless 3D printing makes it happen. Trump's tariffs are causing a massive change in supply chains. These changes aren't necessarily good for the US in the longer term. In fact, these changes are likely to be more harmful to the US the longer that the trade war continues. Employment, a lagging indicator, and wages are up the most at the higher end of the employment scale. There's not a lot of movement, when inflation adjusted, at the lower end. The economy and the stock market look a lot like a debt-induced speculative blow-off. Artificially low rates are the cause, and this is why Trump has demanded negative rates to keep all the plates in the air. It's all happy town before the election. The addition of $1 trillion to the national debt in a single year is no longer even mentioned. Also, there's lots of dangerous leverage in the current economy, and inflation is picking up from historically low levels. I think Trump got scared after China said it would retaliate, and got a glimpse of what the Chinese had in store for him and the US. If there were no deal and sanctions were imposed. Trump might have had to sacrifice the stock market if he imposed tariffs on China, Sunday. But over the long term, Trump is faced with the other reality that if China terminates trading with the US, not only will he have to continue bailing out the American soy farmers to the tune of $30 billion annually, but also bail out all the other American markets, like electronics, cars, planes, etc. That is affected by trade cutoff with China. All this while the US debt is approaching $23 trillion. That is really a very bad situation to be in. The point is, the US was never in a good position, either economically or financially, to be conducting a trade war against China. This should have been evident to Trump's administration, by the consistent trade imbalance that the US was running with China. The US is very dependent on China manufacturing. We buy far more from China than China buys from the US, so how can you have any leverage against China? And who pays for these tariffs on Chinese products but the American consumer? That is all we need, higher prices on everything when Americans are struggling to make ends meet. This probably signals the end of the trade war and China wins. The US-China trade war BS is now pretty much done. And, markets faded quickly, and markets are right. This should be a sell the news event. The Chinese won the trade war with the US. And now we are back pretty much at the point where we started from with the 50% rolled back, let's call it 100% because the difference from 0.10 .0 to 0.05 cents on the dollar will not change the American consumer's behavior in any way and they will continue to buy Chinese products. The attention now returns and is back to bad earnings, deteriorating economic conditions, lower global growth, recessions, corporate debt at the highest in history, world debt at record highs, and so forth. Sell. Trump has evolved the trade deals with China from demanding to begging. President Xi never ever uttered a word in the last couple of years, but bonehead Donnie never stops from giving a running commentary, which puts sports commentators in shame. China's long game is succeeding. Dragging out a bit longer, Trump would kneel and would remove all tariffs for whatever China could offer. Again Trump has proven what a coward he is. For a guy that owned massive gambling operations, Trump sucks at gambling. The alleged so-called big deal is going to be a failed mess when it's disclosed. Look who's involved, Stephen can't find the $270 trillion, Mnuchin and isn't looking for it either. This country will learn the hard way that you can't make deals with China. I fear the US has drifted into the globalist economy a little too deep, and to extradite us from it at this point would cause a lot of pain, perhaps too much pain for the vested interest in farming and agriculture. Trump only did what anybody else would have done when you're sitting at a poker table with a weak hand, you bluff. China held all the cards, and they knew it, they called his bluff, and he had to fold. I think China is banking on the absolute best case scenario to justify this. Trump will cave, all tariffs will be removed. 
NAFTA 2.0 same as NAFTA 1.0, China Trade Policy 2020 same as China's Trade Policy 2016. But look on the bright side MAGA Trump pushed the US just a bit closer to being renamed. The art of the fail. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.